Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap cake and I'm going to be using this silicone bunt pan which I'm really excited to use because it comes out so pretty with the edges and then I'll probably do a drizzle over the top since um, piping on here would be cover up the prettiness. So that's the soap mold that I'm going to use today. The fragrance that I'm using uh, is Crafter's Choice Maple Wood and Vanilla and it smells amazing. I think it's considered a fall scent and I'm in the middle of summer right now while I'm making this, but it just smells really good to me. It smelled like a cake. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of poppy seeds in there for just gentle exfoliant, not a lot. And then I also have these leftover coffee bean embeds. Um, if you saw some of my earlier videos, I did these on top of my wake up energy bars and they melted during the gel phase. So, uh, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them in the cake batter and I'm hoping they'll kind of look like chocolate chips in there. So I'm going to utilize those coffee embeds, get my cake pulled together here. I've got my lye solution in water with silk and sodium lactate cooling off. I'm going to get my oils all pulled together and we will come back and make a cake, a soap cake. All right, it's cake making time and uh, I've got my hard oils melted in here. Here are my additives. I have, um, Sorry, the lighting's really bright. Organic colloidal oats, uh, kale and clay, and some buttermilk powder. And to that, I'm gonna add, I have some organic poppy seeds, just about, well, uh, maybe a teaspoon or two. I just want a little bit of flex in the whole um, cake batter, and I don't want super exfoliating, just a little specks. And then after I get a nice medium trace, I'm gonna add my little coffee beans slash chocolate chips. We'll see how they come out. So uh, for the color, I'm going to do a little swirl, and I was going to do brown, but I thought it might swallow up my little coffee beans if I did too dark of a brown. So what I chose was a hammered copper kettle mica from Crafter's Choice, um, but it's sort of a toasty mica color, so I'm hoping in the swirl in there it'll stand out a little bit. And then I do have some titanium dioxide for the other part of the portion of the batter because the fragrant oil that I'm using can discolor to a tan, so I just want to brighten it up a little. So I've got everything together here. I've got my liquid oils melted that I'm going to add to my hard oils, and we'll go get my lye solution, and we'll get rolling on our cake. All right, I've got all my additives mixed into my oils. I'm going to go ahead and add the fragrance in here. Um, I've never worked with this one before. It had mixed reviews. It's, everybody said it smelled wonderful, but uh, a couple of reviewers said that it had a little bit of acceleration and trace, and a couple of people said it didn't, so I'm just going to put it in here, hand stir in my lye, and uh, see how it goes from there. But sorry about the big uh, no see-through container. I should have used one of my clear ones. There is my lye solution, which has Tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate in the water. And uh, this maplewood vanilla smells really good. It's really nice smell. So, just stir that in, easy peasy. I will go ahead and pour off my little copper mica one here. And we'll see if we need to stick blend afterwards. So we'll go ahead and pour. And you can see the little poppy seeds in there. It's pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. All right. Titanium dioxide dispersed in some water is going to go in here. And my little copper mica that I dispersed in a little bit of the liquid oils I just poured in there. that stirred in. Stir in our copper mica. Oh, that's a beautiful color. And I think it's going to look kind of toasty and cute. So, I may get to stick blending here. Let me set this out for my spatula to sit on because I want a medium trace so that my little coffee bean embeds will suspend in there. So I'm going to give this just a quick 
little buzz and then I think we'll be there. <laughs> my copper mica color which I'm loving okay. so what I'm gonna do is um, mix my coffee beans oh I wish you could see in here all right so I've got a nice medium trace. I'm gonna throw my coffee beans all in here and mix them around and then I will do an in the pot swirl after I get these suspended. And um, yeah, it's thick enough where they're not all gonna to stick to the bottom, which is great. So let me just make sure they're all evenly around in there. And we'll see if you even notice them when I cut, if they look like little chocolate chips or coffee beans or whatever. All right, so we've got those all mixed in. I'm just gonna go around a couple of points with this from different heights. It's already getting gloppy. Smells good though. It's going to be worth it. I keep telling myself that. Smells great. All right. Let me just give that a quick zhuzh around. And here's my cake pan. We will go ahead and pour in. Man, this is the way to bake, huh? There we go. That's pretty full. I think I'm gonna go grab a flour mold and fill it up because that is pretty full. There we go, my handy dandy flour molds. Let me get this all down. There we go. These are so nice for extra batter when I don't have my calculations correct for how much I'll need. These make great little soapy gifts. All right, here is our cake. I don't want to lift it up to the camera and our little soap flowers. These are going to sit overnight and we will come back tomorrow, pop it out of the mold and do a drizzle over the top. So we will see you tomorrow. All right, we are back with our big bunt cake here. It's the next morning and I think, uh, I think it's ready to unmold. I'm checking the sides here and it seems pretty firm and I did put sodium lactate in the soap recipe. So I've got that and I have little extra flour molds here. These are easy so we'll pop these out first because I know we're gonna win with these. You can see the little chocolate chip slash coffee beans in there and they smell, it smells really good today. So the little flowers came out pretty. That's encouraging. They're so cute. All right. And now we're on to this. And I have it on a piece of parchment here that I'm going to try and turn it over on. So when I drizzle, hopefully this will catch some of it. So we'll just push gently here and see if we can get it to release. There we go. Had to break the seal on it. I think we got it. Boom. There it is. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's see if I can lift it up for you here. popped out very nice and these lines I'll have to measure and see you know how to cut it evenly I'm planning on getting about 16 slices out of this so now I'm gonna come 
in and do my drizzly top. I'm just going to do some melt and pour. Um, we'll get that going. Drizzle it over the top and maybe do just a little sprinkle of sugar pearls. So it's going to be kind of simple. It'll be the slicing that'll make it pretty. You'll see the poppy seeds and the little chocolate chip slash coffee beans in there. So let me get my melt and pour ready and we will come back and decorate our cake. All right, it's all melted down and just going to add just a teeny bit of the scent to this. And I'm going to drizzle this clear because, or well, it's not clear, it's kind of that milky sugar glaze color. And then I might do some of the cappuccino mica to make it sort of a mapley or chocolatey color for another glaze. This is kind of runny, but we'll go ahead and just start drizzling. We're going to call that done. I'm going to let this sit for a good couple of hours till that melt and pour gets very hard. And then we'll come and clean it up and make some slices and see what we've got on the inside. All right, it's been several hours um, in my basement where my soap studio is. It's very cool. So I think we are ready to cut our cake. Thank you.